Okay. Ah, ja. Deswegen muss ich auch nah dran Soll ich solches halten? Oder? Nee, nee, ich halte nee okay. Schon, ja. Last year, in April 2022, I met media artist Simon Reckert at the Ars Electronica in Linz. I had an in-depth conversation with him about his work titled Google Maps Borders, which he unveiled three years before. Displayed side by side, one can see two images of the same region. For instance, the border area between North Korea and China. Intriguingly, the Chinese rendition of Google Maps shows no border separating these two countries, while the alternate version does. This artistic examination also captured the instance of Crimea before Russia attacked Ukraine in 2022. In the Russian iteration of Google Maps back in 2018, Crimea was clearly marked as part of Russia. Conversely, the Ukrainian rendition presented an ambitious picture with intermediate lines signifying an indeterminate border. Es gibt halt sowas wie Google Maps, äh, Ukraine, Google Maps, in Russland, Google Maps, USA und so weiter. As Simon Beckert explains, there exists an Ukrainian version of Google Maps, a Russian version, a version for the USA and so forth. You get the picture. So he crafted an algorithm that in essence analyzed the border outlines from each version of Google Maps. Then it overlaid the different versions of the same territory from around the globe for every border. Ultimately it verified whether the border delineations matched up. Und im Endeffekt dann halt gecheckt hat, ob der Grenzverlauf gleich ist. This piece powerfully illustrates how the truth, or in this instance, our understanding of geographical reality, can be subject to manipulation and reshaping based on the one in control of the information. And this gatekeeping of truth, that can be controlled and shaped in the digital realm by those in possession of data and information, is the topic of today's segment. I'm Sarah Krischer and in recent weeks and months I've engaged with artists, researchers and innovators of Ars Electronica, seeking to delve deeper into this year's festival theme, Who Owns the Truth? Who Owns the Truth? The Ur1 Festival podcast for Ars Electronica. Episode 3 – Gatekeepers of the Truth Media artist Simon Weckert very often gets the line Oh my God, you are the guy with the little cart. Oh, yeah. also, <laughs> He'd smile back, but there is a bit of annoyance there as well, as he doesn't want his whole identity to be tied to that one piece. But it's the piece that made headlines everywhere. It's the subject of an Arte documentary. And it is what got him an award of distinction at the Interactive Art Plus category at the 2020 Ars Electronica Festival. And the story of Simon Weckert and his little cart, well, it goes like this. In 2020, a week before Google Maps celebrates its 15th birthday, Simon Weckert walks through Berlin with a handcart. It contains 99 used smartphones. And wherever Simon Wecker takes his handcart, Google Maps shows a traffic jam for everyone. And that is because Google Maps uses data from Android phones to forecast traffic. If enough phones are sending signals from the same spot, you get a traffic alert. And it would even suggest alternative routes for you right away. Until that point, you might think, haha, cool prank, funny man, but there is obviously a lot more to it. This work also explores democracy, society and gatekeeping. The idea for the Google Maps hack, as it's called, struck Simon Wecker during a demonstration. It was on May Day when masses of people were marching through Berlin streets. And with most carrying a smartphone, Google Maps marked them as a traffic jam. Und eine Idee von diesem Feature, dass es das gibt, dass Stau angezeigt wird, bedeutet ja, vor dir ist Stau, ich als Navigationssystem leite dich jetzt außen rum, damit du sozusagen schneller von A nach B kommst. As Record lays out, the notion of this traffic feature that displays jam is to divert you, so you can get from point A to point B more swiftly. Now, if he ponders over protests and questions their aim, it's essentially to disrupt the daily routines of citygoers and confront them with the issues you're protesting about, even if it's just for a second. But if you've got the navigation system, you're directed around and might not truly grasp what's happening. This means that, to some extent, 
The democratic act of protesting could be undercut because you can't confront people as they are being rerouted. And here he sees fascinating points of contention between democracy and digitalization. Das heißt, in einer gewissen Weise könnte man auch sagen, dass das demokratische Instrument des Demonstrierens beschnitten wird. Und da sehe ich zum Beispiel auch interessante Reibungspunkte zwischen Demokratie und Digitalisierung. This is the part why Simon Weck had back the award of distinction from the Interactive R Plus category at Ars Electronica. The Digital Communities category that year had an anonymous group as the winner. Hong Kong citizens who've been organizing pro-democratic protests since 2019 with Artivism. A combo of art and activism, they discovered new innovative tech-heavy ways to organize in a decentralized fashion. That's crucial because that way the protests aren't depending on one person anymore, as Eric Siu, who accepted the award on behalf of the Hong Kong citizens, pointed out. For example, like when you are occupying Central at that time, the financial center of Hong Kong, it's easy for the government to the regime or, or the authorities to target the people. And now at this moment, when it's decentralized, then things happen everywhere. The authority has no way to spot out where and who they should like target, for example. I'm drawn to this project because it starkly reveals what unfolds when a gatekeeper wielding control over both analog and digital realms decides to flex their power. At that exact time, we had a huge exhibition in the Design Center in Shenzhen. After the award got publicly announced and kind of spread across the world, of course, within Hong Kong, Asian countries, but also in China, this exhibition got shut down within 24 hours. That's Crystal Bauer. She's the head of the Ars Electronica Festival and at that time she's been in Shenzhen and had to watch as the Chinese government erased Ars Electronica from their map. We at that time were actively involved in traveling through China, meeting partners, meeting cultural institutions, scientific, educational institutions there to build a close relationship and collaboration in order to bring those topics of Ars Electronica, art technology for society to the citizens of China, because there was a huge interest to go deeper, to discuss this and to find the Chinese perspectives on them. And also, within 24 hours, all those collaborations did not exist anymore. It was the state that showed us its truth, that showed us what is possible in a country and what is not. Where are the borders? What can you do and what not? At times subtly, through back channels, other times boldly and directly, these gatekeepers leverage their power to reach their individual objectives. Last year, billionaire Elon Musk posed a threat to hold his satellite internet service for Ukraine unless he received financial aid from the US. Not quite subtle, yet effective. As the Washington Post reported, the US government had discreetly forked out millions to facilitate the delivery of Starlink terminals to Ukraine. But there is another development. The European Space Agency is working on a European Internet from space, dubbed Iris Square. And thanks to Elon Musk and his Starlink shenanigans, almost everyone in Europe now realizes the significance of having an alternative. As Javier Benedicto explains, he's the director of navigation at ESA and the deputy director for telecommunication systems. And this with European technology which is also translating an ambition of uh, autonomy uh, from the European Union. We have seen from the war in Ukraine that having a dependency, um, I mean, cooperating with uh, third parties, other countries is very interesting, but depending on them can become a problem at periods of crisis. So it is very good to cooperate, but you also have your own, you need to have your own autonomous system. And this is what Iris Square is translating as an ambition. It's not until next year that first services are expected to be launched. This year, at the Ars Electronica Festival in September, visitors will have the opportunity to gain insights into other EU collaborations. Under this year's theme, Who Owns the Truth, they offer opportunities and visions for a dialogue aimed at democratizing power structures and prying open the doors of gatekeepers, even if just a little bit. 
This is evident in art projects, citizen-led initiatives, or citizen science projects. They powerfully demonstrate that collective strength and shared accountability can carve out new routes towards illuminating and democratizing data and truths. In the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>